Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. Got a special video for you guys today. The Shooting with Uncle Dan channel sent me over his Caltech Sub 2000. He sent it to my FFL holder and we went up there and uh, done everything on the up and up, all legal like. But uh, he sent me this thing to do some shooting with and, and maybe put together a few videos with. So today I'm gonna do that. Gonna get it out and shoot it some. I've already shot it a little bit. But we're gonna shoot it some more today. This is a a Keltec Sub 2000 Gen 2. Give you guys a look at it here. Really like this little carbine. I probably should have bought one for myself a long time ago and probably will end up buying one for myself after I've done this video. Now this one's had some upgrades to it. Uh, it's not factory, so I'm not doing like a review on this gun. If, when I set out to do a review, I like to do it from from a factory version that way you guys know what you're getting out of the box uh, or at least you can compare it to the sample that i had this one's had some upgrades some m carbo upgrades i know he said he put a trigger guard trigger charging handle the charging handles back here on these little carbines so he's had some he's done some stuff to it to improve it if you've got one of these Caltech sub 2000s Check out the M Carbo website. They've got a ton of stuff. Uh, I went over there and looked myself, even though this is not my gun. I just looked to see what all was available in the aftermarket uh, for it. And they've got a bunch of stuff for these, for these little carbines. Now, my favorite thing about these guns is how they fold up. This is about 30 and a half inches overall from the end of the muzzle to the rear of the butt stop. But if you pull up on the trigger guard here, this gun folds back on itself and locks in place with a tab right here. So it's not gonna come back apart unless you pull the tabs back. But I think that's pretty neat. It folds down to about 16 and a quarter inches, which is the length of the barrel, the 4130 steel barrel. Gives you a lot of options as to how you'd like to carry it or store it. What's my camera up to there? Trying to lose focus on me. But I really think that's a neat uh, selling point for this gun probably the most important feature on it as far as I'm concerned is how easily you can store it now for those of you guys that don't know this gun can't fire while it's folded your chamber and barrel of course are up here and your firing mechanism is down here these are available in 9 millimeter and 40 Smith & Wesson this one is in 9 millimeter and you can get them to run with a variety of your pistol magazines as well like uh, Smith & Wesson, Beretta, Sig. This one is made to run with the Glock 17 magazines so any magazine that you can run in your Glock 17 you can run in this Sub 2000 Gen 2. So uh, just going to do some shooting with it today and kind of give you guys my overall thoughts about it what it would be useful for stuff like that but we'll go ahead and get started I'll get some targets set up and we'll get to shooting. So first thing I want to do is see if this gun zeroed for the target ammunition that I'm using today, which is just Blazer Brass 124 grain. I've got a target, an 80 inch target set up 50 yards behind me. I've got five rounds in the magazine. So we'll just see if I can put those five rounds on that target. Shouldn't be an issue if the sights are, are zeroed. This gun does have a, has a, crossboat style safety but it's backwards from most guns that I'm used to I'm used to pressing the safety on the right side of the gun and pushing it left to move it into the firing position and this one is the opposite All right, so I think we're good to go. We can go ahead and set some more targets up now. So there's no last shot hold open on this gun. It does have a cutout so that you can manually lock the bolt open. 
but it doesn't hold back after the last shot on its own. So when you see me load a magazine and chamber around like that, it's because I had the bolt manually locked open, not because it held up on its own. Also, I talked about checking zero when I, when I first started the video there. If I would have had to make any adjustments, all the adjustments are done on the front sight. This thing really is a lot of fun. There's a big fun factor to this little gun. Now I do notice that uh, when I go to shoot, I have to get, I have to work really hard to get my head down low enough to see the sights. It's just, you know, I've mentioned it in my other videos, man, I've got a big old jug head, but I have to work really hard to get it down low enough to get down on the same plane as the sights there. trigger reset is barely perceivable. I can feel it. Uh, just a real real light reset. And you do have to come out a little ways to catch that reset. And again, no last shot hold open, but there you go. Ton of fun to shoot. Probably getting my cheek kind of red there. Maybe not, I can't tell. Can't tell looking into the viewfinder. This gun comes in at about four and a half pounds. You can see it does have an adjustable length of pull. You can adjust this uh, butt stock got a Picatinny reel along the top, along the bottom, M-block slots along the sides. You can see Uncle Dan's put a Picatinny, M-lock Picatinny adapter here in this slot. Now, you have to be careful about mounting something on this top uh, Picatinny reel, because if you do, you won't be able to close it up. Now, I have seen some adapters. I think, again, M-carbo has a mount, you can put a red dot on this thing and then flip the red dot out and close it up. And then when you open it back up, just flip your red dot back into place. So that's kind of neat, but just something to be aware of if you mount something on that upper Picatinny rail. Now, I've got 10 rounds loaded up again. That's a 17 round magazine. I've just got 10 in it. I want to save some, uh, some high capacity stuff for the next video. I mean, I've got magazines, but we're just out here just doing some shooting and plinking and having some fun today. So I think 10's enough. I've got a, a three inch, little three inch steel target hanging out there at about 20 yards. See if I can hit it. Ooh, a miss. There it is. <laughs> and we're out. So I think I shot under it a couple of times, but a lot of fun. Neat little gun. Well, I had planned on shooting a lot more than this, but we've got a weather system moving in. Looks like it's about to dump some rain. I've got to get in. I'm kind of waterproof, but my, my camera, my camera set up here is not. So I've got to get it out of the, out of the weather. So I'm going to have to cut this video short quicker than I wanted to. Really enjoying this little carbine. Appreciate Uncle Dan sending it over. Of course, just real quick here, the advantage is 
of a pistol caliber carbine over your pistol is that you've got that longer sight radius, you've got that extra point of contact, so it makes, a, makes it a lot easier to put rounds on target than with your pistol. You're using the same ammo, same magazine, you just have to carry one ammo, one type of magazine. A lot of advantages there. Uh, some advantages over a rifle caliber in a carbine like this is you've got less muzzle blast, less recoil. I can shoot these steel targets and not have to worry about tearing up my steel targets with a pistol caliber. Now the downside of course is you're obviously not going to have as much energy and power as you would with a bona fide rifle cartridge. But I'm just pointing out that there are some advantages. But I'm going to have to get out of here before this starts. That's all I got. I'll talk with you guys again soon.